obsessed with oysters. I mean, I've always liked oysters, but the more the time passes, the more I like them. So I wanted to make a soup that's not only oyster-based, I really want the oysters to shine. That chipotle-flavored oyster soup. I have my pot set at medium heat. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil, one cup and a half of white onion. I'm gonna cut some carrots and some celery. I'm gonna use these vegetables as the soup base. I am really excited about this soup because it's truly phenomenal. Okay, it's not your normal soup. It's not like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm gonna have an oyster soup tonight. But I'm gonna show you why you're gonna fall in love with this soup. And actually, this soup is inspired in a soup that I used to eat when I lived in Mexico City. There used to be this cantina, and it was called Guadiana 19. It was this really fun, old-fashioned cantina, and they had a very, very limited menu. And everybody talked about their oyster soup. We have a cup and a half of carrot, celery, and leeks. I'm reserving a half a cup to add at the end. I love adding leeks. That is something I got from my mom. Whenever she makes a vegetable soup, she adds leeks, and I think it adds like a really nice, subtle warmth to the soup. And then we're going to broil a pound and a half of tomatoes. Whatever you choose that is going to go into your soup, that's the flavor you're gonna get. So if you get tomatoes that are not ripe, that are hard, that haven't fully developed their flavors, then that's what you're gonna get in the soup. I'm going to chop a couple of chipotles in adobo sauce. Chipotles in adobo are jalapeños that are picked not when green like this one, but when ripe and really red, and then they're dried, and then they're smoked, and then they're marinated in a puree of tomato and vinegar and spices for a long time. They have the smoky, the sweet, the spicy. Now I'm also chopping a couple of chiles de arbol. The chipotle and adobo and the chile de arbol are both spicy and smoky. I'm adding some garlic, a teaspoon of dried oregano, a teaspoon of salt. And you can see how tasty and how flavorful this vegetable base already looks. And now, by charring or roasting them, we really took them to a completely different level of flavor. That is gonna do so much for that soup. Seeds and juices bursting out of the tomatoes. So here I have homemade chicken broth, and I'm gonna add five cups. I find that chicken broth in this soup sort of mellows everything out. Let these come to a simmer, and I'm gonna cook it anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. I'm gonna puree the soup in here. See, I'm kind of feeling really bad because it looks so good. So chunky, and look at the colors. Yes, mm. If you like rustic chunky, leave it like that. <laughs> It smells so good and delicious, and look at the color. Look at how creamy this looks. We're just gonna strain this in here. Now, you don't have to strain it, and then you would have a thick puree that would look much more like this, but I'm really going all the way here in making it super velvety, creamy. Pour this back in my soup pot. Turn it back on at a medium-low heat while I shop my oysters. 
Now you've learned this trick, which is a great trick, and you have a lot more control. Grab a kitchen towel, you put your four fingers over the towel, and you put your thumb under the towel like this, and you create a little like holder for the oyster. You find whatever entry you can get, and then you put your pressure. See? Now, once you open all of it, you want to release the muscle from the top. Same thing in the bottom. Now, you can get your oysters fresh from your fishmonger or at the store, or you can also get them in bottles. Already shocked? And the great thing about getting them already shocked is that they come with a lot of the oyster liquid, which you want in the soup. I'm gonna add my vegetables that I had left on the side. I have a pound of already shocked oysters here. Ever since I can remember, I've been obsessed with oysters. I even remember my dad being shocked at how many oysters I could eat. But then again, when I got married and I moved to Texas, my mom came to visit, she was shocked that I now could keep up the pace with my very tall husband. And I eat the same amount of food as Danny, which still shocks Danny to this day. He has to fight for food. Let this simmer really for one to two minutes because I want the oysters to be very, very tender. oysters are nice and plump and super soft and the tomato broth is very spicy but it's like the oysters are begging for it. These oysters deserve their own soup and these ones it. <laughs>